Emily! Okay, I'm here. How far is the hospital from here? 30 minutes. My name is Emily, I'm her doula. She went from sporadic contractions to pushing. Ah. Michael? Um, yeah, call an ambulance. Ah. Do you want to go to the waterfall? Oh, yes. yes? I have been a doula for almost two years now, and I've attended 20 births. Doulas are there for the moms. They're, they're there to help them labor and prepare for the birth, where sometimes in the medical field we see the moms forgotten. We all grow up, I feel like, in America not having great birth education. So when we think about birth, there's a lot of fear. I have a two-year-old son named Elijah. Helping a mom, I think it really helps to have been there before. Wow. <laughs> this is my calling, and this is what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'll be doing this forever. We are 39 weeks and expecting our second child. I'm at this point working full time still. Exhausting, I think, is the best way to describe it. Um, since, you know, there's less rest and more running around since we have a soon to be three year old. Mama? I think that it's hard when you're like being a full time mom, full time wife, full time daughter, full time sister, full time employee, trying to be really good at a lot of different things, um, all at the same time. Oh, what am I making? I'm making tofu? Yes, and rice? And green beans? Okay. So we had a doula and during our first pregnancy. We think it like ensured that we had the birth that we wanted and that we had um, planned for. Our first doula ended up going to school, so the second time around we had to find someone. We decided to go with Emily because she was someone who we trusted. We thought that she would help to make sure that our second baby got here safely. Who's this for? A mama. A mama? Mm -hmm. The biggest fear that I had has to be the first child and how much attention he gets. Hopefully we are, we're able to balance them. Beso para brother? Mwah! Crocs off. What about socks? Socks on? Dude. It's a dude. Me? A dude? Yeah. Where did you learn that? In preparation for Jacob's arrival, Emily hosted a, a blessing way. So a blessing way is an ancient ceremony, different in essence from a baby shower, which is more focused on the baby. This tradition is centered around the woman. This is Christy's village. We are here to make her feel loved and nurtured for her upcoming birth. I think it's really powerful for me to be with women of color, in solidarity with women of color, to have a doula who identifies as a woman of color, and like, what does it mean for our communities? That it's not a thing that's just for upper-class white women. My job is revolutionary. When we grow up as women, we're terrified. Everything that's in the media and Hollywood is like this image of a mom in a wheelchair, you know, screaming, and there's blood everywhere. That's not what it looks like at all. I have my clients watch births. When we start changing this frame that we have, we start thinking about birth differently. So if anything was in the way of this baby getting here, it was my own insecurity and my own fear about doing this a second time. And I think to know that I had the support of all of these people that I loved, I think gave me the courage. I think she needed to, to see her community in action and to really release onto us in order for her body to like say it's okay to give birth. I think we left there and everybody was like, oh, this baby's coming this week. Mama. I know, Bubby. So Mommy's going to go to work. I got the call from Michael, who said that her water broke. When I walked in, I noticed that she was on the couch holding a lot of tension in her body. And so I wanted to see a couple of contractions first and see how she was coping with them. You're in between, right? Mm. 
you're not feeling one right now? Mm-hmm. You are, okay. You wanna relax as much as possible, let all that go. It starts getting into a pattern, like regularly 10 minutes for an hour, regularly nine minutes for an hour, you know, down to two minutes apart um, or one minute apart. And that's when you're fully dilated. So as soon as the pattern is established, we go to the hospital. I was on the couch, like breathing through contractions, and I was like, are you comfortable here? And I was like, oh, maybe I'll lay on the bed a little bit longer and see if I can just get some more rest before, like, you know, we had to go. The thought was, <laughs> if I put her in the bed, and have her like, you know, take it down a little, like contractions will slow down, you know, she can get a little like, you know, shut eye in between. Ah. Okay, take a deep breath and go really low. Oh, good. And a couple contractions into it, I noticed that she started making pushing sounds. And that's when I was like, um, Christy, what are you doing? <laughs> and she was like, I'm pushing. And I was like, don't do that. Don't push. Mama. Uh -uh. I can't help it. OK. <laughs> oh, shoot. OK, OK, OK. Oh, 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 no. OK, take oh. it. Oh, my god. The bag's ready and the car's ready? Yes. OK. How far is the hospital from here? 30 minutes. I was definitely scared because I had to decide, like, should I call 911? And knowing Christy goes fast, I knew we weren't going to make it. And she doesn't have an elevator. All those things were going in my head, like, I don't want to have a baby in the stairs. I don't want to have a baby in the car. Um, yeah, call an ambulance. Uh... EMS was there very fast, um, walked in to kind of assess the situation. They had never been to a birth before. You're doing good, baby, okay? Well, because she's pushing already, so if, if we can wait. If we could deliver her? Well, we're, we're, I think that's what uh, she's I mean, do, you, do you have experience with babies? Even though they had this amazing training, they didn't necessarily know what to do other than if something went wrong. At that point, as a doula, yes, we don't do anything medical, but sometimes we're the most qualified person in the room. I wasn't scared at any point of this process. Saying it out loud sounds a little odd to be like, you're not scared, but I wasn't scared. I was a little shocked that it was happening so fast. Her sister is here now, and she's a doctor. <laughs> you got it, Christy, you got it? <laughs> Breathe when you're ready. You got this, honey. You got this. I just knew there was a lot of people in the room because um, I like could sense that there was a lot of people. My eyes were closed most of the time. I was very much centered on the fact that like this baby was coming. People think somebody delivered your baby, and I don't think anybody's delivering my baby, but somebody's catching my baby, and I'm delivering my baby. Good, Good mama. Good, strong, deep. There you go, Mama. There you That's go. it. There you there go. You go. Oh, yes. Shoulder That's one. It. Come on. One more. There we go. You know, this is what OBs must feel like when they catch babies every day. It's that, that surge of adrenaline. Yes. <laughs> I definitely have a special place in my heart for all the babies that I've helped get Earthside, as we say. But Jacob holds a special place. Oh, Michael. Come here. Is that could be your diva. Come here. Oh, my God. Honestly, I feel like it should be a right that all women should be able to have doulas present because that support is really necessary, whatever that looks like. And it looks different for every birth. They delivered you. They did a good job. You're fine. We were talking earlier about like second time, mom, second time moms maybe not feeling like doulas are as important as they are like the first time. And clearly, <laughs> no, in our case, <laughs> we would have been like totally like lost. Like, we're all entitled to having 
women support women. Um, so it's literally giving us an opportunity to feel encouraged to use the power that we have. That to me is like what doulas are about. It's not like anybody's giving you your power. Power belongs to us. 